Trekking down the Corne Valley now from Kilborough, our culture tour brings us to Berry Dome's Pool. Sue Woolley and her daughter Chloe Woolley will tell us the tale and sing us the song of Berry Dome. the witch who lives in Cornet Valley and roams the slopes of Peru. If I asked you to tell me more about her, I wonder what you'd say. You see, Berry Dome is something of a mystery, whose legend confounds both folklorists and academics. Some say Berry Dome was a mythological figure whose origins stretches back into antiquity. Others say she was an actual woman who lived about 200 years ago, around whom fantastical stories were woven. In all probability, the legend is a combination of the two. Island-wide, Berry Dome was known as the Queen of the Mackled Witches. The poet William Kennish, writing in the 1840s, when the belief in witchcraft was still very much alive, <coughs> gave a very full description of the practice in his poem, Old May Eve. He specifically mentions Cregna Malt, the hill just at the back of the school here, as being the most important post on all Kirkmackle's Warlock Coast. The traditional song, Berry Dome, first collected in the 1830s, came to a wider audience when it was included in A.W. Moore's Max Ballads, of 1896. Now, one would hope to learn all about Berry Dome from the lyrics. But there is a problem. There are two sets of words, both in Manx Gaelic, that bear no relationship to each other, except that each centers on someone called Berry Dome. The first version describes a giantess, a woman of Amazonian proportions, who strode with ease over Carrican, Penny Pot, Snaefell, and Slew Bull, <coughs> leaving her footprints embedded on the side of Peru. She haunted Governor Scoot waterfall on the high slopes of the mountain, sometimes in the ghostly form of an ox or a bullock. And she lived in a stone cairn, similar to the hag's bed monoliths that you find in Ireland. The second version immortalizes an actual woman, Margaret of Stamina, or Margaret a stomacher, whom it was said lived at Braid Cornet on the side of Peru. She was known as Berry Dome because of the clothing she wore, a jacket, breeches, and a yellow skirt, a distinctive yellow skirt or apron. And people in the cottages would see her flashing by late at night when setting out on her adventures as a notorious cattle thief. She also practiced the dark art of witchcraft, putting fear into all those who knew her, and she was reputed to be the high priestess of the Mackled Coven. The song tells us that one night, Margaret's stamina stole an ox, skinned it, and divided it up for her friends. Unfortunately for her, she was captured and brought to trial. But although found guilty and sentenced to be hanged, she was spared the gallows. We can only speculate why. Unrepentant and incorrigible thief that she was, she stole a goat on the way home. And as the song says, she went to the gallows, but she found favour there and came back by Mullacore, leading home a goat. Writing about Berry Dome, folklorist Walter Gill, in his mad scrapbook, 1929 notes that her legend survives only in her home parish, although at the height of her fame she was doubtless well known all over the island. This was a reference to a well-documented court case in the south of the island where a woman accused of witchcraft was said to have uttered the name of Berry Dome as a curse. Quoting a line from version one of the song, Lig er e kiam, C 
sleeping with a stone on her head. Walter Gill was the first to speculate that Beridone may not have been a human person at all, but a mythological figure from the far distant past. He reminded his readers that there's a pool known as the Ling Beridone just above Coronie Bridge. On the first night of the harvest moon, girls from the nearby farms came to the pool and carried out a divination ritual to find out if they would marry within the year. To reach the pool, the maidens had to walk barefoot over a row of small oblong stones, which can still be seen today. They invoked her spirit by chanting the following verse. Berry, berry, give to me my true lover's form to see. If he walks from east to west, I'll wed, wed within the year at best. If he walks from west to east, I'll be a maid a year at least. Now, on a more sinister note, local legend has it that the pool where the young women went to invoke the spirit of Beridone was, in fact, the place that Margaret's stamina, Margaret's stomacher, drowned the ox before playing it. Going back to A.W. Moore, who first published the song in Max Ballads, he said he had been told by a parishioner that Margaret was an actual woman who lived in Mackled at the end of the 1700s. His informant's father had seen her when he was a boy and described her as a tall, powerful woman, as strong as two men, and with a very bad reputation. More recently, eminent Celtic scholar Dr. George Broderick put forward the theory that Berry Dome was the Manx equivalent of the Scottish Calic Burr, or the Irish Calic Berry, the goddess of winter, who turned to stone on old May Eve and awoke again on All Hallows Eve, carrying a magical staff that froze the ground with every tap. With the passage of time, he speculated, the legendary Margaret of Stamina, she of the yellow skirts, may have attracted some of the mythological features associated with the ancient Celtic goddess of winter and both merge in popular imagination as very dome. So there we have it. A pagan goddess who haunts the hills or a brazen cattle thief and sorcerer who uh, haunts the hills. No matter who the true very dome was, she has left us much to ponder on as well as a cracking good tune that Chloe is now going to sing for us. Yeah. 
ਹੈ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ